You know, there's twofold, a a story that's kind of been coming down uh, over the last day and a half that we've heard of um, is this NFL Peacock story Mm -hmm. where the NFL will will reap a hundred and ten million dollar payment from Peacock in exchange for a NFL playoff game to be streamed on Peacock alone will not be on broadcast television. It will only be on Peacock. The NFL um, gets $110 million from NBC Universal for that. Our sources and TV have told us that that pretty much eliminates NBC Universal now as a player for Pac-12 uh, rights, um, which just narrows the list down to, I think, who we've always thought it would be, uh, which is ESPN. But it's going to be interesting to see how that all goes. So that's something to keep an eye on. And then, of course, we have uh, this situation with the ACC and the Pac-12, which will lead us off today on As the Pac-12 Turns. (coughs) Jake, should the ACC and the Pac-12 merge? Yeah, I mean, I I think that it's kind of a long shot that they they should merge or would merge. I I, I think that it's a nice concept, and that's it. I don't think that in practical application, it's really all that possible. I mean, sure, we have planes. Sure, we can fly human beings across the country, but I don't know that from a money standpoint, it makes a whole lot of sense because, again, let's say that these two conferences did merge and you had sort of a super conference, if you will, that covered both of the coasts. At Like, if you have a conference that big, you have to have major players in TV, you know, coughing up a bunch of money for that. Or you're going to have to have a complete 180 in philosophy in the Pac-12 and the ACC for them to go out and do regional deals and, and find ways for the schools on their own to distribute their products. So that's why I'm saying like, it's a cool little narrative and concept and like idea, hey, the ACC and the PAC can merge and now they can go on and com- can compete with the SEC. Unfortunately, that's not how it works because unfortunately you don't have the most relevant sports content in the land. And that's what the ACC's problem has been. And that's what the PAC's problem is now and i think this whole situation with the pac-12 is in dire straits in my opinion i mean at some point you're going to run out of time i mean but is it and and i don't mean to interrupt you there but i think it's really easy as we talk about this pac-12 drama every single day i think it's very easy for people to be like oh it's a dire situation as the pac-12 turns is it really dire for the pac-12 ask yourself this Let's say no merger happens and no teams leave the Pac-12 and they get $20 million a year. Is that really dire? I think it is, but maybe it's I'm not, wrong on that. Nobody's dying. The league's not dying. Teams are not dying. Does their reach go down? Probably. But is it truly the end of the... It's, it's not. It's not. Now, is that likely to happen? No. I've told you repeatedly, I don't think that's going to happen. If they get less than $25 million the end of the day, they will not be able to get a grant of rights. And I think you will see whether it's the four corner schools or somebody else, you know, two, three teams out of this league in Gonzaga, I think you're going to see are going to join the Big 12. Is that dire? It's not. If you have eight teams left of these 10 remaining, I don't think it's dire at all. If you're five, six, seven, you're, you're going to be struggling to have a conference. Mm-hmm. That much is absolutely true. But I think we over-dramatize this stuff sometimes. But I think going back to this, this question of a Pac-12 ACC merger, no, I don't think it's viable. I don't think it's viable at all. Geographically, it's a disaster. Financially, it's a disaster. It doesn't work in any way, shape, or form. And I understand you would have a Western division and an Eastern division and all that's well and good, but the two still have to play each other, right? Like, it it doesn't make a lot of sense to have Duke and Stanford in the same athletic conference. I totally understand, educationally speaking, research, you know, funding, all that great stuff. Totally makes sense. But to have Duke and Stanford in the same conference athletically makes no sense at all for logistics, finances, I don't believe it brings greater reach to either conference or either party. It just doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind. And I think it's, again, this easy thing because everybody, you know, assumes that because Brett McMurphy tweeted yesterday that there are seven teams 
who have been you know, meeting with attorneys to try and get out. But what does that mean? What does it mean? You met with an attorney to try and figure out if you could get out of your ACC <coughs> grant of rights. What does that really mean? It means absolutely nothing. That's exactly what it means. Not a fucking thing. Nothing is happening in the ACC. Until you get an eighth team and until you can find attorneys who say, yep, here's the hole in the, you know, here's the hole in the contract. Here's what makes it Swiss cheese. We're running right through this thing. It means nothing. Not a zip, zero, zilch. It's all talk. It's all check out my biceps. Like until somebody does something that is more than grandstanding. And this is what I say about J.D. Wicker at San Diego State. Once more, you grandstand it. And you got your bag slapped for it. Because now it doesn't appear that J.D. Wicker and San Diego State have any value at all to really anybody. Or we wouldn't be talking about the Pac-12 collapsing. Hell we, no. Like, it's amazing to me how many of these guys are out here running their mouths in desperation. But notice who you don't see running your mouth. Did you notice Brett McMurphy tweeting yesterday evening saying no ACC presidents talked to the media? They were forbidden. Hmm, interesting little twist there, huh? Because you don't want somebody saying a, the wrong thing at the wrong time, a la, again, J.D. Wicker, a la, you know, the, President Robbins or any of these other guys in the Pac-12, certainly George Klyovkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, running your mouth, saying the wrong thing in the wrong, wrong way at the wrong time. That absolutely torpedoes relationships. I think it is a crucial issue in the Pac-12 that Klyovkov has said the wrong things. I think President Robbins at Arizona, I have been told directly, pissed off a bunch of his constituents in the Pac-12 with his great affinity comments and power basketball comments. There's a time to talk and there's a time to keep your mouth shut. And Jake, I think in the ACC right now, I think it's time to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, I mean, that just makes sense. Uh, you know, I think that the ACC, I mean, you're right that there's they, there's nothing they can really do about it un, unless they get that eighth team. And, and, and who the hell knows? Maybe they will. I don't know. But I think that, that it's it's just, I feel like there's a lot of momentum right now for teams to switch conferences. That's what I think. I think, I think in the Pac-12 teams don't want to, but I think if you're going to have a $20 million TV deal, you can't be that far behind the Big 12. You can't be that far behind some of these other conferences. And, and I think it makes it tough when you're a really valuable brand in Oregon or whatever, right? Or any of these brands you see on the screen now, a UNC, a Duke, like, like if you're one of these premier brands in one of these conferences that doesn't have a good grant of rights situation or doesn't have a good TV deal situation, you're going to be pissed about the fact that UCF went to the Big 12 and got paid. And I think that's what's tough. And the thing that I really struggle with, and I know we've talked about this ad nauseum over the last couple of days, what were you thinking with, and again, I'll put the McMurphy tweet back up. What were you thinking with a, a grant of rights to 2036? A, a bulletproof grant of rights until 2036. <coughs> 13 years to go. Like, that's not a stretch in county, friends. That is a federal prison in isolation. Yeah where you're eating jello off of the cell floor. Yeah. That's what your grant of rights to 2036 is. It is one of the dumbest business decisions I've ever heard of. And when you look at grant of rights, look at the, the Pac-12 coming out of this grant of rights, it's what, 12 years? That's ridiculous. And now you've got the ACC who's got 13 more years yeah. to go. Yet you're getting five and seven year deals in these other conferences, like you're structuring business deals, not desperate cash grabs. And I understand for the ACC, hey, 2036 probably gave you a great deal of stability, but it costs you so much money. Yes. So much money. And, and you, you know, we talked on the show yesterday about Florida State and all the Seminole fans came out and said, hey, we've had a Heisman Trophy winner and a national championship. I, do you realize how few people can name the recent Heisman Trophy winner at Florida State? <clears throat> like very few people, Florida State is not relevant. And I know that hurts, and I know you probably don't agree with that, but I'm telling you, I'm a Notre Dame fan. Notre Dame, that's a relevant football program. And they're not good. They're not good. But they're Notre Dame. They're the Golden Domers. They're relevant. Florida State or Notre Dame, more relevant. 
Come on, is that even a conversation? Like, That's not even a question. You look at you look at the ACC and you look at the Virginias. You look at the the Virginia Techs, the Miamis. The how many of these teams are relevant? Can is you, that a real question? Can you truly sit here and tell me that Florida State is more relevant than Florida? There's no chance because Florida's in the SEC. Yeah, Florida gets half a dozen big games a year. Does Florida? Now, is Clemson relevant? Yeah, because they won a championship like 15 minutes ago, right? And they've put a, a, a pile of guys at the top of the draft. We built this program on NIL. Right, like, it's no question that Clemson's relevant. Yeah. But it goes back to this grant of rights at 2036, and I think Florida State knows it's bulletproof, and they're not going to be able to get out unless they pay half a billion dollars, mm -hmm. which is why they want unequal revenue sharing, which I think is one of the stupidest proposals ever you're all in this together figure it out without torpedoing people but i don't think they can do that i truly don't think that the acc has the ability to do that no and i think that i i, I think that the the disparity between the haves and the have nots promotes the haves trying to axe grant of rights deals meaning that florida state thinks they're better than the low end in the acc because they've got this or they've got that and it's like, yeah, you may have that, but the contract says you're all one and the same. I mean, that's liter quite literally, that's what the contract says. You're all, the entire conference is assigning your rights to X, Y, and Z. And I think that's what Florida State doesn't want to hear. And, and look, I get it. I understand why Oregon or Washington might want to, might, might be upset by the prospect of San Diego State getting more than half a share, let's say, as an example. Or why a major brand, you know, doesn't want the lesser school to get an equal share that's I, right i get that and i i also think at the same time that's why the grant of rights model is out of date but again you can't escape the fact you know seminal fan that your school and several others decided to sign a grant of rights to 2027 and then you decided to extend that very same grant of rights right like you decided to extend your grant of rights again so i there's not like as far as the pack and the acc merging that's not going to happen even if they wanted it to happen because you know what that would take? That would take every single PAC school agreeing to the ACC's grant of that's rights. That's right. And that's not happening. It's not happening. Yeah, and again, this is why yesterday we talked about the fact that the ACC has a Florida State problem because, again, I think my best point here, if I do say so myself, right? my best point here is uh, if you had the votes, this would be done already. If you had eight, nine, ten members who were like, yeah, we're out of here, you'd be out of here already. But you're not. And it's why you're talking about things like unequal revenue shares. It's why you're being a cock and you're trying to push people around and people are not letting you push them around Florida Boom. State. Out of here. Right? Like, I, I, I mean, in all honesty, I think, I think the ACC is in worse shape than the Pac-12. Because you're stuck in this deal and you're going to make $30 million a year less than all of your competitors. Just hand $30 million to every one of your competitors and they're going to be in a better place than you are. Because inevitably, I think what happens is the Pac-12 is going to lose membership. I think the ACC is stuck and they're going to wind up staying together. And I'm not somebody who believes that, you know, there's a lot of people who tell you Florida State ends up in the SEC. I just don't buy that. Should they? Okay, that's a totally different conversation like totally different deal should florida state and and i would tell you carolina duke florida state and clemson should be in the sec i think that makes all the sense in the world should they yeah they should will they nah bro <laughs> why what what is espn's win there now obviously espn just got the the sec deal but who's gonna who wants to negotiate that contract where you tell Clemson and Florida State who think they are sliced bread and Dabo thinks Jesus Christ built his program. In God's name, image, and likeness. Who, are, who wants to go and tell them they're going to take less money than the other current members of the, the SEC? It's probably different than what you're thinking, though. Who wants to tell them that? Who wants to tell Carolina and Duke that? I'm not telling them that. Because um, good luck. Carolina and Duke have a basketball argument. Florida State and Clemson do not. Like it, it, there's no easy fix. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And by the way, I think there are two things. This NBC Universal deal with the NFL, I think absolutely impacts 
Um, the Pac-12, we were told by TV sources yesterday that NBC Universal is, is, is out on the Pac-12 and very likely will not get back in because of this NFL investment. I think you're looking at a situation now where I've heard repeatedly in the last week that NBC really wants a new deal with Notre Dame because they want to build um, their Big Ten content and now an NFL playoff game. Like, they want to build a football block, and they have that, and they have a financial investment that they're about to make in Notre Dame football again, I think. That's right, T. It, the Pac-12 just keeps running out of dance Hemorrhaging partners. opportunities. They just keep running out of dance partners. And if they can't get Amazon back involved... I don't know that that they're going to have a streaming partner and then a linear TV partner. I think it's all ESPN. And at that point, I think you're in real trouble because I think you're going to lose. If it's ESPN and $90 million, I think you're going to lose probably half of this conference. Um, I think you're going to lose a majority of folks. Which is why I say, like, I, I think if you lose half your conference, you don't have a conference. Like, if you lose, let's say you lose. If you lose the Arizona schools. Yeah. Colorado and Oregon State, those four as a baseline. Yeah. Why is San Diego State going to join your conference? Why would they do that? Yeah. And at that point, you're relegated to Colorado State. Does Colorado State joining the, joining the Pac-12 make a whole lot of sense to be a fifth or sixth team? Is that a real question? There's no value there. No. There's no value there. And going, who's the P5 program that ESPN is going to pay more money for? There isn't one. So you're into the Boise states of the world. You're relying on the San Diego states of the world. But, and I know that J.D. Wicker has great affinity for the Pac-12. Yeah. But why would, I mean, that's a terrible business decision. You're, you're not, if you're getting 10 to, I can't, I mean, dude, I don't know what ESPN would pay to go all in on the Pac-12, but I don't think they're all in on the Pac-12. Yeah, well, and I think the, the thing for San Diego State is like, even at $20 million a year, you're way up in revenue for San Diego State. That, but I don't think that's necessarily the only conversation for San Diego State. You, you obviously don't want to put yourself in a position to be in a conference that's collapsing, right? Like, you don't want to, you don't want to be part of a sinking ship. And and, and again, I'd feel a little differently about this if there was a bunch of P5 programs that were out mm. there uh, and open to realignment or, I guess, expansion in right. this case for the Pac-12. But there's not. There's really not. I mean, again, you're talking about SMU and Colorado State and Tulane and, like, you know, these different, you know, situations. And, and I, I just don't feel like that, like, Tulane doesn't replace Arizona State. You know, like, SMU doesn't replace, you know, Oregon, let's say. It just that's not how it works. And so that's why I say, like, I, you know, I'm not trying to be in some argument about how dire the situation is, but that's why sometimes I feel like the situation is kind of dire because, again, you know, this NBC news, like, before today with the NBC thing, I was like, all right, I, there has to be traction in the NBC situation for the Pac-12. But now that they've gone and done, done this game with the NFL and they're looking to do Notre Dame and, like, they just don't need the Pac-12. And and yeah, sure. Do they have the space? They could probably figure it out. But it's a need. For, it's a it's a supply and demand yes, thing. It is. They don't need you, and and ESPN doesn't need you, and that's my problem. So again, it all comes back to this idea that their best way forward, in my opinion, is to bring it all in house and ship it out to market. That's the best way to do this to keep your conference intact, because then. You're enabling the Phil Knights of the world to go out and make deals. And what does Phil Knight do for a living? He makes deals. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that's uh, the only way that I think this conference stays together in its current setup. Yeah, I think it's going to be fascinating to watch. Less of us, more of you. Let's get your comments in here. Matt Ritzing gives us $5 to say, hi, Monty and Jake. Hello. I am watching your show on a Southwest plane. Okay. My, uh... I have my peanuts, my mixed drink, heading to Nashville to listen to country music and SEC baseball. Big fan of SEC baseball, Big dude. fan of SEC <laughs> baseball. Yeah. By the way, we're talking Aaron Judge today, and we're we are. not skipping it. Hey, by the way, did you guys see what uh, Utah women's softball is doing? Mm -hmm. How about Utah women's softball? I meant to mention it yesterday. 
How about Utah women's softball winning the Pac-12 championship, the first ever Pac-12, Pac-12 tournament? Yeah. They beat UCLA, one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. They beat UCLA in the championship game. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, again, I know that Utah brings no value to any conference no, ever terrible created. poverty organization. Yeah, poverty, poverty school. Yeah, like, right. no, they don't play football. They don't have a basketball program. They don't even have culinary <coughs> arts, <coughs> right? Like, that's just little old Utah. Right. But they actually play some softball. Right. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Who knew? Just uh, Ritson, Bro, travel, uh, travel safely, my friend. Good to see you, as always. Uh, if you're watching the show right now, if you're one of the 400 people, please go ahead and hit the like button. Um, I slacked on that yesterday. I know that. Um, and I must, I must be better about chiding you folks. To hit the like button, it helps. Uh, Anthony Zappin. Here we go. Anthony's back, giving us two more dollars today. Excellent. Did the ACC magnificent, magnificent Seven hire the advocates? Maybe they should have. Yeah. Maybe they should have. Maybe shoulda. they wouldn't be in some dumbass grant of rights if they had. Twenty. I said 2036. Dude. Can you guys believe? I Man. Like, you are just, you're handcuffed behind your back. Really, between your legs, like front to back, between your legs, you're handcuffed. You can't run. You can't walk. You can just sit there in frustration until 2036. Kiss my butt. Can you imagine? Oh, my God, the frustration. Truck stop Gumby, that's a week and a half in Pelican Bay. Yes, it is. Dude, it is. Yes, it is. You're, uh, you're in A block. Uh, Scott of Greywater says John Skipper was running ESPN when he uh, made sign the ACC. He was. He was, but you know what the funny thing is about all these TV deals? Like, I don't know if you guys saw that the NFL laid people off talking about these economic times. Right. And then they just announced, you know, right away but that they got a $110 million dollar economic paycheck. times, dude. I mean, it's so tough right now. But again, again, also, also we talk about these economic times. Did you guys hear about Pat McAfee today? Oh, you know, because remember the Washington state president said, oh. well, well, you know, um, ESPN, essentially he said ESPN can't make an announcement of a TV deal right now because of all the layoffs in the tech industry. Yeah, and so the optics wouldn't be, wouldn't be too good, man. I mean, we can't be out here signing hundred million dollar deals. And then Pat McAfee today. According to Andrew Marshan, the leading media reporter in the country at the New York Post, Pat McAfee is joining ESPN. Let's talk money. Pat McAfee is walking away from $120 million from FanDuel. He's making $30 million a year. Just from FanDuel to do his ESPN uh, or to do his YouTube show that he's taking to ESPN, that will remain on YouTube. And why will it remain on YouTube? Because he gets about 300,000 views a day, and that's just an ATM machine. Like, it's incredible the money that Pat McAfee is going to ESPN to make and leaving behind from FanDuel. Yeah. Oh, but tech layoffs, and we can't announce a TV deal yeah. because Pat McAfee is getting paid before we are. Don't play intramurals, brother. So everybody who got all pissed that we said the Washington State guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Remember that, you know, last week. Yes, yes. Kirk Schultz, the pre and, 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 you know, like you, you look at the, here's the clip. I'll play the clip. Here's the president of Washington State saying tech layoffs are why we don't have a TV deal. Why is it dragged on so long? I think it's just the environment. It's the uncertainty in the economy, uh, the layoffs in the tech sector and other places. I mean, look at the major media companies have almost all laid off people, and so have some of the major players in the tech sector. And, you know, I know at least one of the partners we were talking to said, we're ready to sign today. But the optics of us announcing that we're laying off X number of people and we signed, you know, this multi-million dollar deal with the Pac-12 are just simply not the best. So we're going to have to wait six weeks. Now, I'm not sure if six weeks make that much difference or whatever your time frame is. But clearly the optics was something that those groups are really worried about. 
No. Um, oh. I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know uh, if uh, I don't uh, know quite. I don't quite know how to answer that. To be honest. Hey, uh, Kirk, but uh, slick, dude. So let me get this right. The optics, and notice he mentioned ESPN, just like ESPN. Uh, the optics. <laughs> So the optics aren't bad to sign Pat McAfee to what's being reported as a $20 million per year deal. And I would remind you, ESPN is taking over full production control. So they're going to pay for all of his staff, all of his production costs, all of that is moving under the ESPN umbrella. So Pat doesn't have to pay that anymore. And they're going to pay Pat McAfee $20 million a year, mm. which by the way is, is, and I know it's crazy, more than each school is reportedly going to make if they do a deal with with the SBN. So let me get this right. You're going to pay Pat McAfee and his boys $20 million a year, but you're only going to pay Stanford nine. Um, but um, the optics, um, um, bro. this is ridiculous. It's embarrassing. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you. I don't, I, I, mm, I don't know what the Pac-12 does. <coughs> I don't know what the Pac-12 does because I think it is incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. Bob Holsey, uh, thanks for being a member of the show. He says, Pac has got to go back to Dumont. I don't know what that means. Uh, Christopher Shannon, why? Notre Dame, this isn't 1953 anymore. Notre Dame doesn't have the poll like it used to. Oh, you want to bet a nickel on that? You want to bet? Well, you watch the deal that NBC, the renewal that NBC's supposedly trying to work out with Notre Dame. People watch Notre Dame football. They travel to go see Notre Dame football. They fill up Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame is on the cusp of the college football playoff, in, even in their bad years. Thanks. Like, you look at... Um, did you guys see uh, that the Action Network, Brett McMurphy, projected the bowl games? Right? And he has... I would remind you, he has Oregon and Tulane at the Fiesta Bowl, right? But, you know, you just, you just start looking and, oh, hey, wait, the, the, the Relia Quest Bowl in Tampa. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you said Relia Quest. <laughs> I can't make that up. Relia Quest Bowl in Tampa is Notre Dame and Texas A&M. No, I said Notre Dame, but Notre Dame sucks and they're not relevant. Well, apparently they don't suck that bad. Because they're going to take on Texas A&M in a bowl game where they'll be favored over Texas A&M. I mean, it's ridiculous. And by the way, you want to know Brett McMurphy's projections for the national championship are Michigan, Florida State in the Rose Bowl game with Michigan favored by five and a half. Georgia and Washington in the All-State Sugar Bowl with Georgia, Georgia. favored by six. Georgia and Michigan in the college football playoff championship game January 8th, Houston, Texas, Georgia, and Michigan, Georgia by a point and a half. So again, Alabama doesn't get in. They play in the Cotton Bowl against Texas Tech where they're favored by four. Mm -hmm. So apparently, as I've been saying, I'm not the only idiot, no idiot, who says Texas Tech guns up, pew, pew, is going to be good this year. I'm out of here with that.